Excuse me, little dog. Mm. Hi, right, guys. It is a cool, gloomy Sunday afternoon coming down over the collapse of everything on the planet here at uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm on this uh, it is Sunday, I believe, September 10th, 2023. And I was over here at Common Dreams and it's going through the Rolodex of Doomer Porn and just brought you uh, an article on the collapse of Antarctica. Uh, <laughs> just some straight ahead Doomer Porn. But then I stumbled on this, uh, what they're calling an opinion piece uh, here and showing up here in Common Dreams out of nowhere by my hero Richard Heinberg. And I think I just did a Richard Heinberg uh, rant recently. Now, Richard Heinberg is not known as, you know, a, well, I guess he's a little bit of an apocalyptimist. But uh, at this point, finally, uh, Richard Heinberg is weighing in on this uh, debate, I guess, uh, which is the one ray of hopium that Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles has. If, if, if I have to search this planet with an electron microscope and a team of bloodhounds to find one ounce of good news on the planet. It is this story, which I don't know is if it's complete, total, unadulterated horseshit or not. And this is this debate that's been grinding on for years about declining sperm rates declining sperm rates over the past few years and decades and it's always talking about humans so obviously the only hope for the planet is that human sperm rates uh, as mine did in the space of about 10 minutes when I was 22 years old went to zero so there is one hope for this planet and that is that sperm rates in humans drop to zero. And so any, any decline in human sperm rates obviously is something that we can celebrate. Uh, but of course, guys, uh, you know, the, the cloud in the silver lining of, dec of declining sperm rates is if it's happening to humans, it's happening to every other one of our fellow earthlings. This is the problem with declining sperm rates is how can we just direct all of this crap, we've all these chemicals and crap we've put out there just to attack humans. And, um, and, and, you know, not having it affecting everything else from, I don't know, lightning bugs to elephants. Uh, but anyway, we're going to hear from uh, Richard Heinberg uh, talking about this. I honestly do not know if Richard Heinberg is a breeder, my guess is that Richard Heinberg is a breeder. Uh, but we're gonna look at this now. This is a long, involved story. Probably take me 45 minutes to read this whole thing. I'm only, I'm gonna read the first part and the third part and all of the middle stuff. If you're interested in how all of this breaks down, you can go on the link and read the middle stuff. But it's the uh, introduction and the conclusion that we're going to talk about. I don't know why he, I, I, I don't think this is the best title he could have given this. But anyway, the title he came up with, or the editors at Common Dreams, I don't know, came up with is why 2% 
is the most dangerous number no one is talking about. The sheer quantity of chemicals being dumped into the environment is quickly growing, and we only, we're only, and we already have a typo, and we are only seeing the beginning of the harm they are doing to us. I think they meant to say it would be nice if they could make it one sentence without a typo at Common Dreams. Anyway, take it away, Richard Heinberg. What is all this about? We've had a summer from hell with July temporarily claiming the title of hottest month on record. But while the klaxons... K-L-A-X-O-N. Wouldn't you love that word in Scrabble? Klaxon on the uh, triple word score. Anyway, but while the klaxons of Earth's climate systems have riveted nearly every clueless moron's attention, something else is silently happening to us and other species Shit! That could turn out to be just as big a disaster, you know, as climate breakdown. Nature is increasingly stewing in air and waterborne toxins originating in industrial processes. Tens of thousands of chemicals, only a tiny proportion of which have been tested for safety, are making their way into the environment. From pharmaceuticals that have passed through human bodies to plastics, pesticides, solvents, fire retardants, and chemicals used in making cookware coatings. Recent research shows that whole classes of these chemicals are affecting sexuality, and disrupting reproductions, reproduction, not just in humans, you know, which is uh, what we're hoping for, but it's not just in humans before you uh, doomers get your hopes up, but in a host of other animal species as well. But the whole subject is controversial and is getting far too little attention, partly because reproduction and sexuality are culturally sensitive topics, and partly because the chemicals industry wields considerable political power. In this article, we'll explore both the science and the controversy and see why 2% is such a scary number in this context. So again, most of the research he's talking about, obviously, is about humans, because it's all about humans. But we'll do the best we can, so at least we can get some good news from the human studies. Multiple studies, which he has links to, have shown that male sperm counts, I did not know there was such a thing as female sperm counts. So maybe female sperm counts are going up. Okay, so he doesn't, Richard doesn't talk about female sperm counts. We're only talking about male sperm counts. Uh, multiple studies have shown that male sperm counts have fallen dramatically in the past 50 years, and that decline appears to be accelerating. All right, thank you, finally. Uh, the decline in male sperm counts appears to be accelerating, and hopefully zero uh, is in the future. While the reasons for falling sperm counts are still being investigated, it is clear that the fetus is particularly susceptible to the effects of pollutants and that impacts at the fetal stage of life can significantly shape the adult. The pollutants most likely to have widespread impacts on reproductive health have been identified. 
hormone mimicking chemicals that have become widely dispersed in the environment, many of which persist for decades or longer. Two meta studies, otherwise known as studies based on a review of all of the relevant research to date, by a team led by Hegel Levine of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem provide the most reliable and broad-based scientific information about sperm counts. The first of these papers in 2017 covered data from North America, Europe, and Australia. It found, quote, a significant decline in sperm counts between 1973 and 2011. It was in 1982 that my sperm counts uh, declined to zero in a space of about 20 minutes. A more recent paper by Levine et al. published in November of 2022 confirmed these conclusions and expanded them to include Africa and South America. Among men from all continents, the authors concluded, quote, the mean sperm count declined by 51.6% between 1973 and 2018, close quote. The study also found that the decline rate currently about 2% per year is increasing. The trend, if extrapolated, would result in near universal male sterility by about 2060. Hallelujah. 2060. The trend, if extrapolated, would result in near universal male sterility by about 2060. But, you know, so it all boils down to do we have 37 years? Uh, having a low sperm count reduces fertility, though if the count is above zero, it only takes one of these little guys it does not exclude the possibility of an, effective ma of an affected man impregnating his partner. However, a low sperm count is frequently associated with reduced sperm quality, uh, including less motility. And that's good. Okay, we have some more good news. Testosterone levels in males are also falling. Uh, several reasons have been suggested with environmental toxins, again, one of the more likely culprits. Low testosterone levels in men can lead to obesity, low se sex drive, and symptoms of depression. Mm. Women are likewise experiencing puzzling and worrisome trends in sexuality and reproduction. All right, we have more good news. Studies in dozens of countries since the 1970s have shown that girls are experiencing puberty earlier and earlier. Oh, shit. I guess I applauded too soon. Uh... <clears throat> uh... In her book, Countdown, and then it has about 500 words after that, reproductive epidemiologist Shanna Swan cites research showing an increase in difficulties in childbirth, increasing incidence of endometriosis, increasing risk of miscarriage, increasing incident of ovulation disorders and increasing, and then of course, the increasing use of in vitro fertilization. Um, okay, as I say, guys, this is a long... Uh, m meanwhile, 
<clears throat> Americans are having less sex and young people in particular are re <clears throat> reporting less sex drive. Okay, I'm going to skip over the all the middle of this uh, his chapter called "Why Is This Happening," uh, where he really looks breaks down the science, and you can go on the link and uh, find out uh, why this is happening and. Uh, but let's get to the meat of the matter that uh, I really wanted to talk about, where it is chapter, but aren't there too many people anyway? Yes, there are, well, I would say there's 8 billion too many people, but there's certainly 7 billion billion too many people, and there's two ways to bring down a population. We all know one of them is, uh, is called increase the death rate, and the other one is to decrease the birth rate by sterilizing the human race and having sperm counts. So if you can't give a vasectomy to every single man on this planet, as I think should be required uh, by international law that every man do like I did and get a vasectomy before ever impregnating anyone. Uh, so I'm choosing the second. Uh, okay. Some ecologically minded folks' initial reaction to the news of falling sperm counts is nonchalant, or even elation! Hell yes! <coughs> it is about time we have some good news. Are you elated, a little dog? I am just absolutely elated. After all, population growth makes nearly all, it's not nearly all, population growth makes every single environmental problem worse and harder to solve. Human population has risen from 1 billion at the start of the Industrial Revolution to 8 billion today, and for the past several decades, we have been adding an extra billion to our numbers approximately every 12 years. One might well ask if humanity will have more difficulty reproducing in the near future. Is that just nature's indirect way? Or I would say, is that just nature's direct way of trimming the overabundance of a particularly destructive, invasive species. That is exactly what this is. It is nature's way. It is Mother Nature's way of saying, I have had enough of this shit, and I'm going to put an end to it. If you won't keep your pecker in your pants, dude, it won't make any difference if you pull your pecker out or not, because you, like Sam Mitchell, will be firing blanks, and you ain't ever going to impregnate anybody. Hallelujah. This way of mentally turning looming tragedy looming tragedy uh, for one species on the planet into possible benefit is short-sighted, unfortunately, yes. Only the most Earth-first-minded person would want humans to go extinct due to an inability to reproduce. There you go. Only the most, I'm, 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 I'm changing one term in here. If you want to know 
uh, obviously, uh, Richard Heinberg uh, should know better than anybody on this planet that humans need to go extinct is acting like this is some sort of goddamn tragedy when it's the best news uh, I have heard since going down the rabbit hole. Only the most misanthropically minded person would want humans to go, to, to go extinct. I honestly am not a misanthrope. I am an anti-natalist. I don't even know if Richard Heinberg gets the difference. Anyway, however, if some of the accelerating trends cited above were to continue, near universal sterility would indeed be the result. Even if some people could still reproduce, we might be trapped in a real-life version of the Handmaid's Tale. <coughs> Unsurprisingly, companies, governments, and think tank tanks <coughs> that encourage population growth are using the news of falling sperm counts to encourage more growth now while it is still possible ignoring the ecological impacts of higher human numbers as well as the decline in global human carrying capacity. But of course, now we get to the bad news. Make sure I'm not talking to myself like I was last night for 37 minutes I was talking to myself. But of course, guys, if we could just stop here, this would be the best news I have ever reported in my entire life as a doomer. But there's one problem. What's uh, bad for humans is bad for any other uh, animal that makes sperm, which would be pretty much all of them. It's not just humans. It's, <clears throat> it's bad enough, obviously. I would say it's good enough that chemicals could result in a population crash this century, but other species are being impacted also. Take insects, for example. A 2022 meta-study led by Ver Veronica Heilmeyer noted that, quote, the ongoing decline in the biomass, abundance, and species number of insects is an established fact, close quote. And here is our uh, hero, William Reese, Ecologist Bill Reese recently told me, quote, We may not notice, but insects are the glue, nuts and bolts of many ecosystems. Remove the bugs and the rest of the system falls apart. Oh yeah, the human enterprise is part of the rest of the system Close quote. The most recent estimates suggest that insect biomass is declining by up to a startling 2% per year. This frightening trend is no doubt partly due to habitat loss, but another major cause appears to be the same chemicals associated with increasing reproductive problems in humans. Forever chemicals, BPA, phthalates, etc. <clears throat> and the story is similar with yet other animals. Studies of farmed mink in Canada and Sweden have linked industrial and agricultural chemicals with lower sperm counts and abnormal testicular and penis development. Y you know, I'm just trying to think. People who study abnormal developments in meek penises. What a job. 
Uh, and we've probably, sure you've all heard of this one about how a similar effect has been seen in alligators in Florida, in crustaceans in the UK, in fish downstream from wastewater treatment plants around the world. Even species in the most remote regions of the planet are suffering serious chemical contamination. A female orca carcass that washed up on a beach in Scotland in 2017 was found to have shocking levels of PCBs in her system. Scientists who examined the whale's ovaries say she had never been reproductively active, although she was at least 20 years old. Orcas usually start mating at 14. It's hard to argue that these reproductive impacts to insects and other animals are due to diet, obesity, or lifestyle choices. Uh, rather, for most humans and other animals that are affected, the obvious and likely culprit, once again, is toxic hormone-mimicking chemicals dispersed throughout the environment. The fact that both human sperm count and insect biomass are estimated to be declining at about 2% per year may be just a numerical coincidence. <clears throat> Nevertheless, it's a number that should grab our attention <clears throat> unless the chemical load on the environment is radically reduced and soon the stakes may be existential if sexually reproducing animals, including humans, lose the ability to yield offspring, then in the future the biosphere may host a radically reduced roster of higher life forms even if humans uh, go extinct. Uh, you know, so even if we lose the single biggest threat to global biodiversity, which is humans, the same thing that's taking a humans out could take out every one of our fellow earthlings. Meanwhile, we humans must come to terms with a confusing reality in which we face the seemingly contradictory risks of both overpopulation, which is contributing, well, I would say, which is the foundation of environmental ruin and a population crash due to chemical-induced reproductive problems. It's easy to dismiss one by pointing to the other, but we must somehow grapple with both. The outcome for all life on Earth will be far better if we support... See, here, here we go again. His little human-centric, uh, rah-rah humans... Um, I'm, so anyway, I'm going to do some, some creative editing here. It, the outcome for all life on Earth will be far better if we ban phthalates and other toxic chemicals. Yeah, right. Uh, meanwhile, the public should be warned more explicitly and urgently about the perils of chemical exposure and provided with information information about the products most likely implicated. With regard to climate change, one often hears the refrain, we don't need to save the planet, the earth will be just fine, it's just humans that will suffer. In reality, some environmental trends now in motion including the widespread release of endocrine disrupting chemicals are imperiling not just humans but all of nature. Our 
rubber duckies and other plastic crap, overly manicured lawns, throwaway packaging material, and cheap cookware really worth that level of risk. Anyway, guys, I will take uh, any good news where I can get it. So, uh, but you know, it, it would be nice if we could have some good news uh, and, and have it last for more than 10 seconds before we get the bad news. Uh, you know, we're doomed. Every one of us is doomed. And anyway, it is starting to rain, and the little dog says, Pop, I need to go eat my daily dose of my factory farmed fellow earthling while I still can. My guys. Boy, here comes the rain again.